that time, Madison was quite serious. They were friends. It was made, so it had to go within the arc of the script at the same time. So when that happened, uh, it, would, it showed it was supposed to show a bond. Meaning, I took a two by four and I swung it at his head because I'm getting mad. And he ducked, and I hit the windshield. And I realized what I did it was like, you know, like I'm just trying to hurt my friend because got, I get mad at him, you know. And the guy character, like old beefers, but he gets mad because he swung and he breaks the wine glass and he breaks his, and he cuts his hand. But that makes not a laugh, you know. It's kind of reminding you, yeah, no, no. It's, it's like just put the damn sunglasses. Cash from Malta, you better pack a lunch. <laughs> anyway, yes, sir. Um, just to clarify, uh, the issues that you have with They Live uh, have more to do with behind-the-scenes stuff than the movie itself, or are you unsatisfied with how the movie? Oh, no, I and uh, I don't. I think maybe the role as an actor, you know, but you know, I just see a lot of stuff there. But that time. That was the first, first one that a wrestler ever in a major motion picture star in a major motion picture. So, but it, I guess why I'm saying that is because the action, especially the attack, they had uh, reviews, it's called reviews. And when it came out, uh, YouTube had Rattle and Hump came out, Dennis Quaid was all American, and YouTube blocked off Hollywood Boulevard and did a free concert. And they just got, I want to die and then <laughs> And we came in number one for the weekend. Um, do, you, do you have a motivation or a tie with the upcoming live action G.I. Joe film? No, I think it, I'm not sure. Let me for 12 hours, he's got to do 
Dewey. <laughs> Santino or whatever that kid's name I slap. Uh, just like five weeks ago. Yeah. They can't hang, boys. <laughs> you want to go for the big one, man. They, don't, they, they won't jump. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I was wondering, uh, could you share uh, one of your favorite Johnny Valentine stories? I don't know if there's any favorites. <laughs> Johnny Valentine, um, I based half my career on what Johnny Valentine did. It was in Houston. I don't know. I don't know. Johnny Valentine, I always had a great time in the match. hit hard. And uh, um, I was studying everybody, man. And uh, Johnny one time, this two, two, two reds, uh, I'll get up there. So um, <laughs> uh, I. Uh, I asked Mr. Bellman, he said, I was on last too, and like 45 minutes of brutal. And he twenty said this to me, he said, he said, kid, I can't make you believe wrestling's for real, but I sure the hell can make you believe I am. <laughs> and he was. So one of the things about Johnny is that I guess you read, I don't have supports. Johnny used to love to go poop in people's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and he could actually get down there and put the Dairy Queen whip on. You probably books and stuff you can find this education. So they started this thing. One time I think there's big ribs back there. Back. And this, this is a bad one. I'm trying to get too fast. Something like this. Uh, um, John, uh, Jay York was in Calgary, and he had a brand new Cadillac convertible, and Jay York and Johnny Valentine would have words. They are having a party there, and so Johnny Valentine went and ran a garden hose from the inside of this, because it was camel, like 35 below, inside of the, uh, the uh, uh, kitchen to the Cadillac, broke a window, put the hose in there, and left. Well, you know, 35 below, the next morning, the whole car's frozen. <laughs> Jay York, they, they don't have any proof it was John, you know, Jay York figured it was. So what he did is he went and one time, like two or three months later, in New York, Johnny Valentine went to the new club, stayed at 5 o'clock in the morning, drinking, and Jay, Jay York hired an art welder. And he was, I don't know, parking meter, a, a post, and all, well, and Johnny came out like, you know, this is Jay York himself, told me he's one of my members, told me the yeah, uh, Jay told me he was going to drive along, and he was so drunk he got in the car, started, and he put it in drive, and he didn't even see the angle iron and stuff, man. Right? And the transmission was gone, and he put it back, and finally he still didn't know what was going on until he went inside to phone for his car, and he tripped over the angle iron before he realized that somebody saw it his angle iron. To the car. <laughs> so, next stage, you gotta make it quicker. Johnny Gunn, it's Jay, has, Jay York had an atomizer, and he had, so when he came back from the match, one of them old ones with uh, glass of them, and he would go after his match, and that would clear up whatever it was. So Johnny Gunn tried to do that out and put in lighter food. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, worse. Uh, and so Jay York, Johnny was on the boat. Jay York comes back up, boom. Jay York was like 280 pounds, 290 pounds. 12 foot bull whip around them, lumberjack boots, you know. God, you know, hands like creature to grab, but black and goon. Used to do it the way I had a cigarette in my mouth, and in TV, 12 foot bull whip, you take the cigarette. You know, so, formidable guy, man. <laughs> you know, packing all the time. Uh, <laughs> it's got no sense carrying a dull knife or an empty gun. None of them will do you any good, and I'll get you thrown in jail. Oh, <laughs> Some of uh, the lessons of life. <laughs> so Johnny, boom, Jay comes, he goes down, and Jay gets so mad, he goes to the his truck, and he tells the cop, he says, uh, um, I got a couple of M80s, you know, so here, a couple of bags go over, he's going to kill Johnny. And Johnny Valentine was in the, in the shower, and in those days there was a thing called Halliburton, which was a bag of lock, and all the boys used to put their jewelry in one and put it in this Halliburton. 